Hello. I'm going to compare two men who gave up their military, military careers because they didn't get on with their commanding officers. Two different men, one British, one American, and two different outcomes. One very American and one very British. We all know a fair amount about Lieutenant Colonel Scheller. He's the American, while the other is Major General Matt Matthew Holmes, who got degrees in economics and defence studies at King's College, uh, joined the Royal Marines, served 30 years with them all over the world and got a DSO, the Distinguished Service Order, for his work in Afghanistan. In 2019, he became the Commandant General of the Royal Marines, and that lasted until 2021, when earlier this year, the abrasive relationship between himself and his commanding officer, Admiral Sir Anthony Radakin, resulted in him being relieved of command. Now, I found it interesting that Sir Anthony Radakin actually is known as Sir Tony Radakin, and I reckon that's a bad sign, but that's my own personal opinion. Last week, Major General Matthew Holmes killed himself. Before I go into that, I want to tell you First of all, how happy I am that Lieutenant Colonel Scheller has been released. It's an outcome which I'm sure is the result of the upswell of popular indignation that followed his arrest. And I'm filled with admiration for the American people. They stood by him. Well, not only that, they contributed to his family's welfare, which ensured that whatever else happened to him, he could be certain of his, the future comfort and security of his family. So, uh, you know, that's a huge weight off anyone's mind. I suppose there'll be some sort of a show trial in the future. But in the meantime, he's out. And so far, it's a good outcome. And I congratulate him and all of the people who stood by him. We can contrast that with what happened to Major General Holmes. Now, the situation certainly wasn't exactly parallel because Major General Holmes was having a lot of personal problems as well as the loss of his job. His marriage was falling apart. And as I said, he'd been removed from his command in the Royal Marines. So he didn't actually step off the rug like Scheller did. The rug was pulled out from under his feet. And obviously that's very different. But one very telling thing is that he was clashing with his commanding officer. And as I said, an officer who goes by the name of Tony. This uh, is last year. Last year, he said this. I've had a very tough year. I feel beaten down, not listened to, merely run over by someone with no military judgment. Sound familiar? Too much is about appearance. Well, of course, this may have been just his perception, but it does seem as if the commanding officer had at least some sort of woke agenda. Uh, it was obviously something which this serving officer found not only not to his taste, but also not good from a practical point of view. Now, what happens when a soldier leaves the military? I, I want to backtrack a bit on that and talk about soldiers in Britain. People have different reasons for joining the army, of course. Oh, and I just want to say, sometimes I use the word army when I mean the entire military. Um, I don't know whether that's actually a British colloquialism or just my personal carelessness. But anyway, if I say the army, it doesn't necessarily mean just that branch of, you know, like the infantry or something. So be aware of that if I slip into that by mistake. So who joins the army? Well, in general, I'd say that they'd have to be the sort of people who prefer to live their lives in a community that's hierarchical, regimented, literally, and with very traditional habits. That, by the way, is why military governments don't work that well, because 
they always try to run society along military lines and society doesn't operate like that. The important thing is that people who thrive in the military do so because they like the camaraderie and they get along comfortably in the very artificial, well demarcated structure of uh, an army environment. Now, a lot of the lower ranks especially are filled by men from families that don't work too well in some way. Of course, there are women in the army, but in this case, I'm just talking about the men. There's a much higher proportion of young men from chaotic families who join the armed services. If you want any backup on that assertion, this is a paper from the National Library of Medicine. It was published in 2013 and it's entitled Does Adolescent Family Structure Predict Military Enlistment? Living in a single parent household during adolescence increased odds of military enlistment. Living with a step parent or with neither biological parent more than doubles the odds of enlistment. It's sort of obvious, isn't it, that a young man from a family where parental support might be uneven or non-existent, uh, he might find stability in the military environment, a stability he craves. And in this country, you can join the military at the age of 16, you know. Obviously, you're not going to be sent into combat, but you're there within the structure. So a proportion of the intake is young men getting away from a chaotic family situation. Not all, for sure, but a much higher proportion than you'd find in the rest of the population. And generally speaking, they do well. They enjoy the army, they enjoy the routine and the certainty of the chain of command and all the rest of it. The problems arise when they leave the army. Now, all the forces have what they call transition strategies. If you look at the army website, as I did, some of the opening paragraphs say uh, words to the effect of, um, yes, yeah, something like you have to remember that you won't be in the army all your working life. So you should prepare for your return to a civilian job from the beginning. The army don't abrogate their responsibility, but of course, there's only so much they can do. And the fact is that a lot of soldiers just can't handle civilian life. So you very often find the drunken wanderers of society, the homeless or the semi-homeless, the, the people who, who bunk down in doorways along the streets of London. They tend to be old soldiers. Well, often not that old, by the way. They just look that way. And now, now I'm going to keep a promise I made a few years ago. I was in Glasgow, Queen Street Railway Station. And I fell into conversation with a perfectly polite but somewhat inebriated man whose face bore the deep lines etched by a hard life. He wasn't asking me for money, by the way, and I can't remember why we got talking, but he did. You know, people talk to me all the time. I suppose I've got that sort of face. It turned out he'd been a soldier. He was a Scot. Well, that's hardly surprising. We were in Glasgow, after all. He's intensely patriotic and very proud of having served in a royal regiment. He told me, well, part of some stories about his life as a soldier, some of the places he'd been and the actions he'd been involved in. Yeah, unless he was an extremely good liar, he was an honourable man and an honest man with a drink problem and probably a drifter as well. And he was by no means unusual. Anyway, at one point he asked me what I did. And I said, well, I write a bit. And he said, write about me. Tell people about me. And I said I'd try. So now I'm keeping that promise to him. This was a man who had ended up on the scrap heap of society. And it's a terrible shame as he was obviously a worthy individual. But once he had got out of the army, for whatever reason, he felt no other purpose in life, no structure, no telling him what to do, no chain of command. He probably had no family as well, and he couldn't handle it. And now 
I'm not saying this is exactly the same situation, but I should imagine that Major General Holmes found himself in a sort of upmarket version of a very similar situation. His family was disintegrating. He had to, to try to find a job in his mid-50s, which is not easy at the best of times. And he was, after 30 years out of the hierarchy, well, ejected from the hierarchy and camaraderie of the military. And possibly he also felt that he'd failed to prevent what he perceived as a deterioration of the goals and methods of the Marines, which he had contributed so much to build. And he loved so much. That's obvious. All right. So I'm just going to explain a couple of things to you when, when comparing Major General Holmes with Lieutenant Colonel Scheller, um, especially for Americans. In the US military, as I understand it, the Marines are a, a completely separate group of soldiers, altogether different from the rest of the military. In Britain, the Marines are part of the Navy. There are very good historical reasons for that. It is a highly specialised fighting unit, but they're not their own group, which is why Major General Holmes, commanding officer, was an admiral. Anyway, back to my speculation about Holmes's state of mind. It may have been part of the problem, the fact that he couldn't defend his precious unit from the depredations of a politically correct administration, which is the way he saw it. Now, here I'm into speculative territory. I just have the feeling that Major General Holmes killed himself because he felt that if he spoke out, he doubted that anyone would listen to him. And this is why I mentioned the, the difference in status between the American Marines and the, uh, the British Marines, because when the British Marines are part of the Navy, there's the whole admiralty structure above them, around them, under, under the whole uh, the setup. Whereas in the American Marines, it's, it's like a sort of rogue unit, as far as I can make out. You know, not exactly rogue, I'm exaggerating there, but you see what I mean. It's a, it's a separate thing. And I think that's why uh, Holmes felt that he couldn't speak out in the way that Scheller did. Uh, maybe there's more of a tradition in the British military of keeping quiet anyway and being a gentleman, not publicly criticising your commanding officers. I, I have this, this idea that it, it exerts a possibly stronger cultural pressure here in the UK than in the USA. But as I said, there's the whole Navy there. Uh, sort of pushing down on him, whereas uh, um, somebody in the Marines, it's a lighter top area before you're straight in to the very top command. And so it seems that the he felt that the only way out uh, was suicide. And, you know, it's an unspeakable tragedy. Uh, also, I have to say, you Americans take better care of your veterans, uh, I think. I'm not saying the government does. I have heard that the government isn't that good with veterans. But the people, the ordinary people, have a much, a much better sense of obligation and gratitude towards those who come out of the armed services. At least that's the way I think it is. Uh, as demonstrated indeed by the way people reacted to Lieutenant Colonel Scheller's predicament. In Britain, there's almost a sense of resentment about ex-soldiers or, or even contempt. And I can imagine that many soldiers feel the same way about civilians. And uh, Holmes might have picked up on that, uh, believing that there was just no way back into civilian life. So I'm going to end with a couple of lines of a poem by Rudyard Kipling. Now, this is for uh, Major General Holmes, and it's for that unnamed ex-soldier in Queen Street Station. And the, the poem's called Tommy. The narrator is called Tommy Atkins. Don't worry, I'm only quoting a couple of lines. Tommy Atkins is a common working class name of the time, and so that that does for a sort of British 
Everyman. And if you haven't read it, I would recommend you checking it out. It's very pungent in its description of how the British public treat soldiers, especially, especially, but as you see, not always confined to the lower ranks. So, for it's Tommy this and Tommy that and check him out, the brute, but it's saviour of his country when the guns begin to shoot. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.